Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. So these verses are commonly taken out of context by the work salvationist to promote a works-based salvation. They say if you're still committing the, these sins or living in these sins, which is the same thing, by the way, according to God, there's no difference with living in sin and committing sin once every few days. But these work salvationists will say if you're still committing these sins, you won't go to heaven. That's not what it means at all, because if that were true, that would be the epitome of works of the law salvation. And according to Titus chapter 3 verse 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And I admit, I used to take these First Corinthian verses out of context as well. But if we read verse 11, it says, And such were some of you, but ye repented of those sins. No, that's not what it says. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. In other words, once you trust in Jesus alone, you are no longer considered a sinner. And if we read the beginning of 1 Corinthians again, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous are unbelievers. All believers have the imputed righteousness of God. All believers are righteous as God himself. Romans chapter 4 verse 20 reads, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, talking about Abraham, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So you trust in Jesus alone. You're not trusting in anything else to get you to heaven, whether it be repenting of sin, good works, etc. You're only trusting that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again. You are imputed God's righteousness. You are judgment ready. Acts chapter 17 verse 31 reads, Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness, by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. This is another reason why uh, work salvation makes no sense. Those who deny faith alone, their logic would have to go, you need your righteousness to get to heaven, which is a filthy rag according to Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, or that you need your righteousness, which is a filthy rag, and God's righteousness to get to heaven. Why would I need my righteousness if I already have perfect righteousness? You can't get any more righteous. God's righteousness can't go any higher. That's like saying I have a full glass of water, which represents God's righteousness. Then I need my own righteousness, because God's righteousness isn't enough to get me to heaven. If I have to repent of my sins to be saved, when do I get the imputed righteousness of God? After you turn from all your sins, turn from most of your sins, the Bible doesn't give you an answer on how many sins you must turn from to receive the righteousness of God. I mean, all it says is once you believe that Jesus, that Jesus rose again from the dead, you will receive this righteousness. Believing in Jesus and receiving the righteousness of God are both events. Turning from sin is not an event. Turning from sin is a process. So that's another reason why repenting of sins to be saved or good works to be saved doesn't make any sense. So that's all these verses mean. The unrighteous are unbelievers. They are the ones with the unwashed sins. All believers are righteous as God himself. Jesus Christ already took care of our sins. That's the whole point. Jesus died on the cross.